We've been talking about upgrading your current HB flat to a bigger five room EA or two story mezzanine in the last few months. I'm sure you've seen our videos, you've seen our, our advertisements. And I've been getting a lot of inquiries. People will call me up and you know, they will ask me, they will tell me their, their situations. Most of the time they want to upgrade because they've outgrown their flat. Budak-budak kecil semua dah grow up and then they need more space. Or, or maybe they tell me that you know, they just don't like the location that they bought their BTO in because they grew up in a different estate. They are staying in a different estate, but some, they don't feel at home. And then some people, they just want to move back closer to their parents' house. So all these are legit uh, concerns, legit reason to move out. But if you ask me, that uh, everyone will have different reasons, but everyone will have similar fears. Number one, they're on takut yang tak ada duit nak upgrade. Tak ada capital lah nak buat renovation semua gerbang gerbuk semua mana. And then people will also be fearful yang bila nak upgrade rumah, they will have to top up cash every month. And they don't want to do that because, of course, siapa nak top up cash kan for your house? Ada duit CPF to pay for the house. You would rather keep your cash for your children's expenses, for your daily expenses. You know, children, anak bukan satu, dua. Ada tiga, empat yang ada. So all these are real daily expenses yang kita nak kena go through. So I'll just share with you how one of my clients who currently, currently at this point of time, baru jual rumah. They are in the process of uh, getting the keys to the next flat. Two-story EM in Pasir Ris. So, just gonna do some calculations. I have some, I have a click here helping me. I remember he sold his current flat in Punggol for 485k. All right. And then uh, the outstanding loan that he had back then, 136, huh? 136k. All right, sorry, this is a four room flat in Punggol. And then the CPF refund from the husband's account was 122k. Okay, this CPF refund, eh, basically, is the total amount that you have used in terms of deposits, in terms of monthly payments for the house over the past five years. So you have to refund back 182k back into your own CPF account, and the wife's 89. 89k. Thanks. All right, 89,000. So basically, this 89k, this one to two, you can use back for your next flat. So after you sell your flat, after you refund all this HDB outstanding loan, CPF, and all that, your cash profits. Cash profits is 136,000. And then on top of that, they have extra savings in their OA. Husband has 42K, wife has 32K. Basically, you have excess here because when you bought the house, you were earning a certain amount. All right? Then over the last few years, you have had gaji increments. You know, so basically, over the past five years, you have racked up this amount of savings in your OA. All right? Because not everything goes to the house right now. So basically, they want they went to purchase uh, an EM in Pasir Ris. But I'll share with you a little bit on how they did their search, lah. Eh? Okay. Now uh, we go to Property Guru, and then uh, basically this is what they did, lah. Eh? This is what we did for them. We search just EMs in Tampines. Tampines, okay. Tampines and Pasir Ris. All right. Eventually, they bought Pasiris, but we were searching Tampines and Pasiris eh? because their parents were staying in Tampines and they would get grants on both sides. Um, so right now, there are 151 units of EMs available in Tampines. The, we'll sort by the cheapest price, of course, because who wants to buy an expensive unit? Um, you see, the cheapest EM in that area, it is starting from... 315? No, this size is a three-room flat, actually. Possible. 570, 27, 247. This is also actually uh, an EA. Alright. Okay, this is where the real number, the, the, the real listings start. Lah, eh? The cheapest EM in Tampines actually is 580, block 428. You know, street 41. And then 355, street 32 is going for 599. Tadi, 580. This one, street 11. You know, 600k. Pass race, street 11 also. 610. 610, 610, 615, 620, 630, so But you have to understand the more expensive it gets, you know, it is the house, you know, is uh, more done up. Other renovations were. So my client eventually bought a house for 605k. Alright, now you have to understand, he would not be able to purchase an EM in Pasir Ris for 605k back in 2012, back in 2013. Prices really have dropped. Prices really are almost at all-time low in the last five years, okay? Uh, which is good in the sense because you plan to upgrade. That means your EM is cheaper than ever, lah, kan? Because like I said, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, the cheapest EM in Tampines, in Pasir Ris, it would have started at 650, senang-senang. 
you know, 650, 670, 680, those are the cheapest units and then on top of that, I can renovate juga. So today, you are buying something at 600 and possibly yang anda below 600 pun boleh dapat. Even your renovation, it is still cheaper than your neighbor. Going back to the numbers, alright. He bought it for 650, 605k. He has to pay stamp duty to IRAS. Alright. The stamp duty is? 7, 7, 7, 7, 5, 0. So the total cost price for him was? 750. All right. So how much loan does he need to take? That is everyone's question, kan? Because when you buy a property for six one seven k, are you going to take a loan for six one seven k? No, you're not. You're not going to take six one seven k because remember, just now I mentioned you are the CPF, you are the cash, you are the, you also are the grant because he is buying close to their parents. Um, his CPF that he had from the current the, the current flat two eight six k. Alright, and then he has a certain amount of cash, which was 136. Alright, now grant. This grant is called the proximity grant. It's a new grant. Uh, 20,000. You get it if you purchase close to your parents or if your parents come to you as an uh, come with you as an occupier. So you see, from 617, you toll out your 286, you toll out your cash, you toll out your grant. That is the amount of loan balance you take. But of course, you're not going to dump in. You, are, you get 136,000 from your sales. Are you going to dump in everything? You're not. Okay. HDB regulations is a minimum 50%, which is around 60K, 68K. That is how much you need to deposit. There are ways to reduce the amount of deposit needed for your next flat. When you reduce the amount of deposit needed, you increase the amount of cash that you keep back. All right. So my client actually did not deposit 68K. He deposited only around... 30,000, somewhere around there. So he actually kept a cool 100k cash on, on for, for himself. Lah, eh? So right now, when but, but for today's example, we just take it young. We follow HDB's regulation of depositing 50% of your cash proceeds. Eh? The balance, eh? so 617, you minus 286, you minus 68, you minus 20, 20k grant. The loan you need to take is 242. Seriously, this is cheaper than my own mom's three room flat. The loan needed to get a five room, uh, an EM today is not as much as what you think it would be. Alright, so now, let me put things in perspective sikit for you. Okay, so currently, he is staying in a four room flat. 4A, Punggol. Alright, he is moving to an EM in Pasir Ris. Sorry, if by now you still don't know what an EM is, please check it out. Huh? Um, at this point of selling his flat, his outstanding loan was 136k. The amount that he needs to take today? 242. 242. Okay, bro, guys, you can log in to your HDB page to check what is your outstanding loan, what is your loan balance, the, the amount of loan years balance. Right? For most people back then, they would have taken a 30 years loan. All right, after five years, you would be left with 25. Yeah, he's only stayed there for five years, the Juan, so his balance is 25k, 25 years. Now, his past race flat, we did the calculations. He does not need to take a full 25 years. Okay, we calculated for him, he takes only a 15-year loan. Alright, you have to understand when you bought your current BTO flat, how much cash did you put? How much CPF did you put? Alright, you needed to take a high loan. You needed and then your CPF was quite small. Today incomes have changed. Alright, your incomes have increased, alhamdulillah. You have sufficient amount of CPF. You have cash profits juga to deposit into your next flat. You do not need to take such a big loan as previously. Okay? Now, the cash top up monthly for his current 4A flat. Zero. The cash top up for his EM. Also, zero. Alright, and he's taking a 15-year loan. He is saving 10 years right now. Alright, now... He is current age, he is 35. So 35, his balance is 25. That means he finishes paying off his current flat in six, at 60 years. At 60 years, baru dia habis jual rumah, habis bayar rumah dia, rumah for flat. And after fully paying off at the age of 60, what are his options? His options is to drop to, to downgrade from a four-room to his only option is to downgrade to a three-room or a two-room flat today. Uh, okay, do the same thing. Current age, 35. No, let's do something. Dia ada tiga anak. 
one, two, three. Current age of the youngest of the eldest is seven. You know, uh, his second daughter, son is around four, and youngest daughter is two. All right. By the time they have his bayar rumah for the next for the EM kan, by the time they have his bayar rumah, he he will be uh, fifteen plus thirty-five, uh, fifty years. His children will be fifteen plus two, seventeen. 19, berapa? 15 plus 7, 20, 22. 22. Just nice. By the time he finishes paying for his flat, his children will be entering tertiary. Right? Poly, uni. One thing's for sure, there will be cost when your children enter this age. This age group. You nak belajar semua, kan? So, 50 years. 50 years old, rumah dah habis bayar. Alright? And then, the punya age also, 10 years difference. He finishes paying off his new flat 10 years faster and he gets a bigger flat. So, what are his options when he reaches 50 years old? Once he fully pays off his flat, he can downgrade from EM. He can downgrade to uh, if he needs, if he still needs the size, if he still needs the space. Five room, four room. You know, if you have three room. How much cash will, have, will he have? By then, and just by this simple comparison, it seriously makes a lot of sense for him to upgrade from an, a 4A to an EM. He has zero cash top up. Like I said, dulu gaji dia, the household ini, dulu dia gaji, okay, I tak tahu lah, when he beli rumah dia, gaji berapa. Sekarang, gaji mini dia, 3.5, somewhere around 3.5. Gaji dia, how much? 5. 5. Around 5K. Alright, that is his income. Alright, because his income has in, has increased, so the CPF pun dah monthly dah naik lah kan. So he can afford to pay the house fully using CPF. That was how we planned for our client who wanted to upgrade from a 4A to EM. Initially, he did not know what his options were. Alright, <clears throat> initially he thought that he was going to go to you know a five room in Tampines. You know, but he didn't realize one prices have dropped. Okay, so this is a, a very specific plan to, to to a family, to a couple, kan? And lain rumah, lain cerita lah, of course. You know, not everyone has 3.5, 5K income. Yang orang ada 8,000 gaji, tapi it's not fixed. It tak ada CPF pun. So all that will make a difference. In fact, this is a four room, 2 NEM. We've already done, you know, houses from the tinggal in three room flat. And then eventually, he bought a private condo. You have to understand... Uh, your own calculations. You have to understand your own situation. Only then, you know, you will know what your options truly are. You know, things can get better for you here. And that is the only reason why we are looking to upgrade. You know, because we do not want to stay stagnant. If you have any questions, you can just please drop me a text or message us on this platform. And inshallah, we will get back to you very soon. Give us two to three days and we will reply. Thanks.